Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We're out here in the carving tank getting ready to carve up some pieces with scrap wood. Pieces that we would normally throw out, discard, uh, burn, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's really no reason to not make a couple dollars off every usable piece. But what's considered a usable piece? Well, if you stick around, I, uh, I'm going to go over that with you. It's usable pieces. What is a usable piece? To me, it's anything that you think you can create a piece of art from, right? We're chain talking chainsaw carving. Today, we're going to tutorial do a tutorial on carving a small bird out of this piece. Look at the size of that in my hand. Triangle. This is not very big, all right? You know what this comes from? When you split a log in half and you have two halves, you cut the corners off and carve your bear from the center. These are the corners. Why throw them out? I've been carving little birds and painting them. I'd show you, but I already took them to the store. So hopefully I'll have a finished one on the cover photo so you guys can see it. But right, this piece right here, roughly 24, 26 inches. We'll cut it in half. We'll actually create two birds. I'm going to do that with you guys in just a minute. Here's a couple more I have set aside to make birds out of. Here's one that's a little bigger. Might even be able to squeeze a bear out of. All right, this is like my scrap heap pile. Look at this. Here's a cutoff. All right, what is this going to be? I don't know, maybe an owl carved in. Why throw it out? There's another one. Almost looks like a wing shape, right? So we could do an eagle wing. Sell that for a couple bucks. Come over here. We just got different cutoffs, different shapes. You know, other that could be a sign. Just keep your mind open. Here's the bottom of a log that got cut off to level the log. I didn't need this six inches, but... We can block it off and carve little quick sail bears out of it. Maybe get one, two, two, maybe three out of this chunk. Here's another piece. Big chunk that came off of a uh, big log, obviously. Blocking it out for something. Got thrown to the side, but this is a good sized chunk of wood that, who knows, we can definitely create something out of it. So, this is what I'm talking about, guys. You know, creating art out of these scrap pieces that we have kicking around. Even this little piece, little tiny chickadee bird that somebody will honestly love and cherish. This here was an end cut. It was a full round. Came off a log and in the middle of carving a bear sleeping in the moon. All right, that's what that'll be. But the top half of the log was shot. Like this was all matted up, you know, like, so this was the part where they cut the tree down and it tore out. So I just got rid of it and a little bear. Um, but yeah, so, you know, things we can use that are kicking around to uh, create items to sell. Now, I'm going to get stuff together here, and we're going to create at least one bird together out of this piece. We're going to have two cameras going so you guys can see, and I will try to do a voiceover with step by step. Now, some of this is just, you got to feel it. You got to see it. You got to want it. You got to go for it, okay? But let me help you out as much as I can. One, safety gear. You guys should have chaps, steel toe boots, something to protect your eyes, ears dust mask best way to go two i'm gonna be running my steel ms a 200c this is a battery saw but you can use your ms 170 they both run the same size chain and bar so they would make the same cuts okay next tool i'll be using a die grinder quarter inch shaft half inch green flame saber tooth burr all right we're gonna use that to clean it up after that, we will possibly use this Dremel with what's called the eye cutter burr. All right, coarse green. We'll use this for really fine detail if we want to take it that far. Now, the next thing that I know not everyone will have, heck, you might not even have all these, but if you have the chainsaw in this one, you're going to have a really cool piece. All right, um, we'll take it a step further with this and a step further with another die grinder and a cross cutter burr as well which is the smallest burr cross cutter burr saber tooth offers right here all right so it's like a quarter inch cross cutter now uh all the burrs i use are saber tooth if you guys don't know i think my code is still working you guys can punch in hall 10 capital h-a-l-l 10 get a discount if you're this far and you haven't given the video a thumbs up please do and after you watch the video leave me a comment let me know what you guys think let me know what you need help with what do you want to see in the next tutorial video and oh my word, we're four or five minutes in, way too much talking. Let's start. All right, finally. So we got that piece in the jaw horse. We just cut it in half. We're talking about a piece right here. It's about 10, 12 inches tall. We're leveling the bottom. This is the bottom side sticking up. So I put it in top down, bottom up. 
We want to lop off these corners just a little. All right, kind of carving into the wood in a way. This will be a little mini tree stump we're creating for the bird to sit on. Now, on one side, one of these corners, you got to figure out which one's going to be the tail. This is going to be my tail for the bird, so I don't want to cut this piece all the way off. I want to cut in like if you guys can see here, right? We're angling into the wood. We're going to cut some of it off, but we're not going to cut all of it off. We want that tail to overhang the tree stump that we're going to create here in a little while. Flipping that log over, making sure everything is secure. We're going to grab a crayon in a minute, just kind of give you guys an idea of where the next cuts will be. All right, with a Dixon lumber crayon, that's what I end up using. I'm going to that cut line for the tail. Now that the piece has been flipped over, bottom side down, top side up. Just kind of give myself just a little bit of a marking line, right? Just a, or marking a line, so I, whatever. Anyway, we want to kind of make this next cut level. We're not going to be going all the way in, maybe quarter, half of an inch. So have some saw control here. This line is the top of the tree stump your bird's going to sit on. All right, so kind of go in, make a few cuts, go to the tail. Try not to over cut into the tail. Lop off these front corners. A lot of this is, it is self-explanatory, I think, in this video. Um, hopefully you enjoy the sound and the sweet noise that my voice makes. I hope it's enjoyable and helpful for you. Um, <laughs> all right, enough of that. So right here, we're going to angle the saw just a bit. We want to go down and angle down and get rid of this back corner, but we don't want to remove our tail at the bottom. So come down and kind of swoop away just a little, leaving some meat for that tail for later on. Now, all this is practice. Each bird will get easier and easier. And guys, we're doing this out of scrap wood. So, you know, if you goof up, don't worry about it. Finish the piece. Just keep going. Finish it because every little cut and every little thing that you do is practice for the next one. So if you can get all your mistakes out in your first couple pieces because you finished them, then, you know, the, the next one you do, you already know what not to do. So right here, we're making some angle cut in and cutting that out. This will be like the lower of the side of the wings. And then here we angle down instead of straight across the front. I like to come in at an angle from the sides because birds really aren't flat across the front. So we kind of want to try to make them look a little rounded, a little belly, a little chest sticking out. You know, it's rounded across that area. So as you can see here, right, took out two wedges in the front and the lower. It kind of gives us a rounded belly look. Coming in at the top, maybe. I don't know. I'm showing you with my hand because it's a small piece. Figuring out center. And then uh, we're going to come down and swoop away. We don't want to go down super far, though. Right? Like, that was honestly too far. I shouldn't have done all that. But So, with these cuts, we're blocking out the top of the head. And where it kind of starts to swoop out is going to be the shoulders of the wings or the top of the wings because the wings will be right up against the body. We're just sort of rounding our, our cuts. We're just rounding the edges because birds aren't square. So, you know, the goal for this piece, one, make a couple bucks out of scrap wood. Two, make a bird that has some detail and looks very, very similar to a real bird but it doesn't have to be exact. We are working with pine. In this case, I do have some issues because I am using a really, really wet piece of pine. So you guys can see all the furring and fuzzies that keep happening. And that just, uh, it, it, it really, uh, it, it just becomes a real pain in the butt with small, small pieces because it tends to give you such a hard time to put detail in it when it's really wet. But either way. All right, so as you guys can see, we kind of angled back there on the sides, coming down, cutting up underneath the body just a little bit and rounding what is going to be the top of the stump over. We're going to widen this piece out a little so the tail looks like it's away from the stump some, so we're just kind of getting into our cut close to the stump, not the tail, sort of swooping the blade out, okay? This is going to give us more of a three-dimensional look, more overhang that the bird is on the top of a stump. That way there he doesn't look so flat and he doesn't look so much like one piece, 
you know what I mean? The, the goal for some of this stuff is to make him look a little more like it's two pieces put together. Now, again, all that can be achieved by how much detail you decide to put into it, but keep in mind, these are scrap pieces. We wanna make a couple dollars. We're not gonna make hundreds of dollars off these usually. Usually these are a, a quick sale item. You know, you might be able to get 40, 50, 60 bucks. Depends on how the market is, the area, the show you're at, all that kind of stuff. Maybe even only 30 bucks. Just, just really 20 bucks. I mean, it just depends on the detail you put in, how well they come out. Uh, my birds, I'll price them all out at different prices depending on how good they look. If they look like garbage, I'm going to make it cheaper. If it came out really, really good, then, you know, we're going to put a little bit better price on it. So that cut on the back, it's going to be the mohawk for our uh, cardinal, because that's what we're carving a cardinal. Sorry. Um, rounding that back just a little bit. I mean, like I said, guys, it is a tutorial, but I'm not giving you every single cut because I think we've got some good views and we're going slow. I know the video's long. The first tutorial in a while, you know? It's, it's, it's first tutorial in quite a while, so I haven't done too many cuts here, as in footage cuts, removing a lot of stuff. That way there you guys can see every little thing. So here we're using the side of the teeth, the side of the bar to kind of just cut in a little bit and shape out our wing. It is about saw control, taking your time. I'm going slow here for you guys, but once you get this down, you can knock these out really quick. I mean, we're looking at what, 30, 40 minute video here, but in all honesty, you should be able to knock these out, everything but sanding and paint in like 20 minutes, you know, 15. It just depends on how much practice you do and uh, speed comes with practice so don't jump in here and try to be super fast and knock them out real quick because that's not how it works go out there have fun take your time have fun have fun take your time you know what i mean study some pictures of what bird it is that you want to do because it's all still the same concept and uh have fun because <laughs> that really is the key and then speed will come with each piece you create and detail will come with each piece you create and that's this kind of just the way it works so just keep that in mind as you guys are carving and remember to be safe so here we're just shaping up the neck to the head just above the shoulders kind of just rounding it up a little bit with the saw this is this just saw control guys because right here if your saw bites you just made a big overcut that you can't really do anything with so controlling your saw and we might laugh Jesus such a small piece and I'm trying to control my saw you know blah 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 well that's my theory is if you can have saw control for a tiny piece like this it's gonna be that much easier later on with a bigger piece right now you're building muscle in your forearm your shoulders your chest the muscle right there by your elbow like even in your back and all you're working on is this tiny little piece with your light little saw when you get into medium pieces and bigger pieces and you want to go carve for six seven eight hours that day if you don't have the muscle strength if you don't have the stamina to run that saw or multiple saws for multiple hours at a rip you're going to have troubles that carving is going to take you a while you're going to be sore you're going to do a ton of work in one day, probably not complete it and not be able to come back the next day because you hurt. You know, it's like anything. You got to build up to it and take your time and practice and all those great and amazing things. So just kind of giving you guys some tips here as I go. You know, it's also always a good idea to stretch out, stretch out your shoulders, arms, your wrists, your back Just stretch yourself out, you know, do some good stretches, even if they're static stretches. Um, kind of anything to get you moving. I always try to stretch out my hands and my wrists because those are what bother me. Uh, wrapping your saw handle with a little bit of uh, handlebar tape for like bikes, that's a good one. Uh, that's taken down a lot of the vibration and things like that. Uh, I'll see if I can link one of those in the video as well because I've been putting those on my saws and I'll tell you, it's helped my hands out a whole lot. So a lot of the work up to this point is just using the saw to kind of sand and shape the nose of it. Now, if you're using the bottom side of that nose, you have less kickback than if you hit it with the top side of the nose, all right? If you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The top side of the bar will grab, throw the saw back toward you. It's called kickback. The bottom side of the bar kind of just 
grabs and eats. That's just the way it works. So here, all I'm doing is finessing, shaping, kissing the wood, as I say, with the nose of the saw. We're just sort of sanding away. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this, you know, try it. Again, we're building forearm, muscle, bicep, shoulder. You're working on the stamina to do this later on a bigger project, but you can always switch to your power tools at this point and get in there that much closer. I am working toward using my saw as much as I can. You know, I, I really am. That's what I'm working toward. I'm working on building the muscle and the stamina to do this so that whether it's a large piece or it's multiple small pieces that I want to knock out in a day, I'm not going to have fatigue after a couple hours. I can just grip and rip and knock out a bunch of stuff within a few hours and be like, man, I feel good. I don't feel wrecked. So we're looking at our wing. There should be two sections in the wing. So I'm drawing that line in. The lower section, the feathers should be longer. In the upper section, just these short little lines. Now this bird isn't very big, so again, the detail is tough. And the goal is to make it look like a cardinal, where somebody can just be walking, walking by or see it from a distance and go, hey, that's a cardinal. I want that. I'm not going for exact you know, proportions, exact wing count, feather count. I'm not going for all those things because this is a quick sell. This is a quick sell carve, right guys? Um, and, and to be honest, all the big carvings that come into play as a chainsaw carver tend to be orders. Like, and if they're not, I end up doing them just for fun. Like the really big, uh, like five and a half foot Bigfoot I did. I'm still sitting on that. That guy didn't sell. I still have that. I did it for fun. The shark jumping out of the water after the uh, seal that I did for Shark Week, what, two years ago, year and a half ago? Still sitting on it. Hasn't sold. Um, I did multiple lions a couple years ago. One, uh, the first one I did, I have it at the store. Still sitting on it. I mean, big carvings draw customers in and people are like oh cool look what he can do but then they walk away with items that are anywhere from 300 actually 300 dollars and less tend to be you know your your majority of your carvings and if you took it a step further you get into you know if you can sell anything for 20 that's a definite sale but these days 20 dollars for a carving just isn't feasible but you know 100 to 50 bucks is is something you can sell pretty good so that's just just some tips here guys as you're watching and learning how to create something kind of like this i know this is not like i'm not gonna lie this is not like top of my game sort of carving right here this is just like we got to knock out some pieces because we need product right i got craft fairs coming up shows coming up stores that need product and we got to knock out a bunch of these and once you get going if you have like say half a dozen of these that first one's going to be like, meh, the second one will be a step better, and each one will get better after that first one. So don't count yourself out if your first couple look like firewood. Finish them. Sand them, finish them, throw some paint on them, and mark them cheap. Be be happy with 20 bucks on it, right? Be happy with 15 Be happy with the amount of money you set on it. We're not going to make a million dollars on these things. We're just not. All right, this isn't a huge corporation. This is you doing this as your small business or your hobby or, you know, just for fun, just for fun, just for friends. And that's all okay. I have to talk money a little bit here because that's what I do, right? I'm selling this stuff. So, and some people want to know. So here we're using the Flame Burr from Sabretooth, quarter inch shaft, green coarse burr. If you guys know, you know, that's my favorite burr. All I'm trying to do is shape and round and uh, clean this up, but the wood is so, so wet. You can see all the furring and fuzzies happening. It just, it sucks. I can't do anything about it. The cool thing with the roundedness of this though, it gives us some grooves and will kind of make the outside of this piece look like bark without having to take another bit and go through and actually create bark because well, that's time consuming and you know, then you got to bring the price up. But it's a good idea to use this bit to round in from the shoulders to the neck and up the head. Right? We're trying to get rid of like the fuzziness and the tear away from the chainsaw because your chainsaw is aggressive. You know, we all know. And you want to clean these things up. It's a small bird. So the more parts of the bird that look sanded and are cleaned up, 
the less rough he will be in the more well not the more but the the better the carving will accept the paint the better it will look i'm not saying spend hours sanding this piece because you're not going to make your money back on that you're just you're probably not gonna but go through and at least clean it up and try to even out you know where it is that you left too much and, and all those sorts of things so the beak can be a difficult thing, whether the wood's green or wet, you know, sometimes the beak goes flying off and you gotta reshape your design. It's all right, don't bother gluing it on, it's not worth your time, just try to recarve something a little bit different. In this case, the beak stayed, and I'm coming in and just rounding into the uh, like forehead and eyeball area and shaping into the beak. If you guys are still here, and you haven't given the video a thumbs up, please do show me some support. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you get, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, what could be better? Like I'm open to criticism from my subscribers. I'm not open to being called names and being, you know, beaten down by people. But if there is something that we missed or, you know, or that I missed that we uh, could go over a little better or help you out with, I'm totally open to that guys. Like that's why, this is here. That's why these tutorials are here. That's why this channel is here. I want to help you get in touch with your creativity and, you know, making stuff and improving on your art. I am not the top carver. I'm just not. I'm just a guy that likes to share what I know. And what I know changes sometimes daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. And my work progresses and gets better by the year just like everybody else's that puts time in. Now there's new carvers that have been carving less years than me and their work is way nicer than mine. I can admit it, they totally are. Their work is awesome. I've got some, I got a guy on the new carvers page, Cody, just knocked out an owl. Cody's owl, Cody, if you're watching, dude, your owl is killer, killer, awesome work. So if you guys, just so you guys know, if you want to share your work as beginners, we're not, no criticism, we're not sharing links to other channels and all that stuff on there. If you want to share your work in a group of people that are learning to carve from this channel, you can. On Facebook, look up Kyle Hall Woodworker New Carvers. Go to the page. There is like a questionnaire thing. You got to answer everything and then I'll accept you in the group. It's the only way to like keep the bots out and all the riffraff garbage. If you don't answer the questions, I don't accept you. I'll deny you. You can come back, try again. It's just, <laughs> it's just the way it is. So we get into these feathers, trying to do just a little bit of an undercut. Now, this burr can get the job done. If this piece was a little bit drier, I mean, it would be cleaning it up a lot nicer. But the fact that it's wet, it's giving me a hard time. But we're just doing some undercuts here. We're kind of just layering these feathers on top of another one over the other just a little bit by cutting these lines down. That wet wood is aggravating sometimes. But hopefully this will uh, help you guys out. Don't be afraid to do different angles and different things like that. Um, it's also a good, if you see that thumbnail, oh man, I've cut my nails since this video. It's like, wow, my nails look horrible. But that thumbnail right there got hit by one of those angle grinders. Keep your guards on and wear gloves. Even doing this project, you guys should have a pair of, even if they're cheap, work gloves from like the Hardy gloves from Harbor Freight, wear them. Um, they just, they don't give you a ton of protection, but they give you just enough where you can get your hand out of the way sometimes. I had a pair of gloves on and I touched my angle grinder with my thumb as I was working on a piece and whoo -hoo, boy, I'll tell you what, that wakes you up faster than a cup of coffee in the morning after a long night. That was, uh, that was crummy, but it is what it is. Wear some gloves. I don't wear big, heavy, chunky gloves uh, because I don't have good control with the saw or the power tools. Normally I am wearing a pair of those cheap hardy gloves though. Protect your hands. Guys, your hands are your money maker, right? If they're all cut up and beat up, it's really tough to work. <laughs> That's for sure. I think the gloves I normally wear were wet, so I didn't throw them on this day, but whatever. 
All right, what are we getting into here? The eyes. So this is the cross cutter burr. All burrs and sanding things are saber tooth. All right, guys. This is the smallest cross cutter burr that saber tooth has, and it works great for these birds. I don't dive in real deep with it, but we go into a certain depth that looks good to the eye. You got to judge this for yourself, and kind of hold it there. See it smoke, and let it kind of braise, or I can't think of what that word is called. Maybe it, is it braise the wood, something like that. You're kind of just burning and almost sanding it with the piece to get the eyes in there. That's all I do. All right, dust it off a few times, come in, and with this little burr, or bit on this small burr, this works great for those chest feathers. Listen, play around with this. Play around with that pattern. You have this tool, make it do multiple things, right? We pay good money for these things. They don't always have to be meant to be used for one specific task, like cutting eyes. Okay, great. A little bird needs chest feathers. Here it is, knocking them out. Can you use a burr and overlay and undercut and do all these fancy tricks? You sure can on a bigger bird. It's really tough on these little ones. So when you're done, hit them up with the torch. Burn off your fuzzies and all those sorts of things. Uh, in this case, you guys, like I've been saying, this chunk is soaked and so he's not burning up very good at all it's yeah yeah when this piece is completed it actually ends up in the shop so i'll probably say it somewhere in the video but when you create these pieces and they're wet have the mindset that you're not going to finish everything on this piece the same day make up a bunch of these and then just set them aside no paint sand them the best that you can right here i am with a flap sander um, sand them the best that you can and just set them aside in a dry spot out of the weather. Come back to them in a few days. In the meantime, work on some other stuff. Come back to them in a few days, re hit them with the torch, re sand them. They're nice and dry. Now you can apply the paint and finish and you're done. So, not everything is a uh, uh, one day task, you know? You got to stretch it out so that you can make nice pieces. So just kind of showing you guys size and so you guys can see angles and close up kind of stuff, you know, cause all that's important. Hopefully it'll help. Uh, right here, I've moved into the die grinder and the, they call it the eye cutter burr from Sabretooth. This is coarse. And all I want to do is clean up around the eyes, clean up around the beak. You're kind of defining stuff. His beak could have came out a little bit further. I could have pushed the head back and made that beak come out a little bit more with the saw, but it is what it is. Every piece is a little bit different. For me, my customers like that I have all these different pieces and my carvings don't look like they came, you know, from a cookie cutter. That's just me. There's a lot of carvers. Um, their pieces are all very, very similar and look the same. And that totally comes with uh, a lot of practice and having one set design, sticking to it and just knocking them out. Why do they do that? Because they sell. They're, they sell really, really well. They've had years of experience and they know that if they make something look a specific way every time, they can sell it. I'm doing this. Uh, yeah, I want to sell my pieces and make money, but for me, it's an art aspect. If I have to create the exact same piece over and over and over, I am going to get sick and tired of doing that because that's just, that's who I am. I don't want to create that way. Will I make a whole bunch of cardinals and a whole bunch of bears? Yeah, but I want to make them all look similar but different, if that makes sense. So, again, guys, using this burr to do some undercuts. If your piece is drier, it will look much nicer. So, <laughs> just keep that in mind. All right, guys, so here's our little bird. Hopefully, I was able to kind of walk you through it. If not, like give you full details at least give you guys an idea of like what you could do so at this point it's a good idea to add paint because sometimes it's a little difficult to tell like what the heck is it you just carved and if you add paint and you add details that much further people will be able to walk up to this and know exactly what it is in this case it's going to be a cardinal so what i like to do is spray paint a little paint in a can little paint in a can and spray them down red once that dries i get a brush and a little bit of just cheap water-based acrylic paint 
and we'll do the black and do a little black on the feathers and highlights and it'll look like you know a cardinal then after that you can go ahead and grab some clear coat which let me see if i got one out here and you guys can see what i use for carvings like this that are getting that hand brushed paint i just do like a quick coat of something like this just a quick pss, pss, and it's done just to help keep the color on there most people are going to keep these birds inside and so i'm not putting you know like the really expensive stuff on it and you can do several several tiny carvings with a can like this so i'm going to add some paint now when adding paint guys obviously there ends up being overspray all right it's just you can do different things. You can hold the bird in your hand upside down and the overspray won't fall down onto your tree trunk. You can be on a little more of a time constraint like myself for the length of this video and just spray them up. Now, the biggest issue I have with this little carving right now, I'll be honest, is the fact that this wood was soaked. Uh, this was outside in my scrap pile and I grabbed it for this video and to be honest I should have grabbed this piece. This piece is bone dry. It's been in the tent for months. I don't know why I grabbed the one from outside. The issue with this is there's fuzzies. All right, got all these fuzzies that won't even sand out because it's so it's so wet. All right, even by his face and things like that. So just something to keep in mind those cutoffs if you're going to be doing this in the future, let them let them dry out, okay? Now, I think we'll do a second video carving up another bird like this. I'll walk you through it again, because usually we do some different things and whatever. And he'll be a little bit bigger, and we'll do it out of this piece and try to add more detail. All right, guys. So once the red paint is on there and dry, you want to take your die grinder, clean up the overspray that you have, okay? Get in there, cleaned up. Try not to touch the bird. Once that's done, then you move into the black. Hey right, guys, I got some black paint here, way too much, and just a really fine brush. What I want to do is get in here where the eyes are. And if you look at a cardinal, it's kind of like they're wearing a mask, you know? So you just paint all this up, throw some paint on his little mohawk, right? And I like to come in in those undercuts, put a little paint in your undercuts on the wings. So a lot of this, this is up to you guys. You know how much detail, what you want to do. Make this piece your own. Make the bird your own. And to be honest, this is not one of my better ones. It's just not. Sometimes they come out really cool and sometimes they don't. I will have a photo of the ones that I did the other day. I think they came out much nicer. Some different birds, a parakeet, a chickadee, a blue jay, and a cardinal. So... They were all fun, all out of scrap pieces, just like this. All these little carvings, you know, I'm going to try to price them out at like, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks, probably 50 bucks a piece, 50, 55, I don't know. And uh, we'll see how they go. We'll see how they sell. I mean, that's the goal of, you know, using your scraps. Why throw them out when hopefully you can make a few bucks with them? Now. The idea, yeah, it's scrap wood, it was going to go to the dump, why don't you charge less, it could always come into play, but honestly, you're putting your time into it. You're still turning a scrap piece into a piece of art. So that's not really, you know, a fair statement from someone if they say that to you. So just keep that in mind, because people will. People, you know, you don't have to tell people it's from scrap wood, you don't have to get into that whole conversation. Um, it's all right. And all I'm going for, to be honest, with a bird of this size, that's not like sit down, let's carve it, let's take our time at the workbench, is similarity. I just want it to look similar to the bird I have in mind, right? We just want it to kind of look like a cardinal. It doesn't have to be exact. You want it to be one of those pieces where somebody can walk by it and go, ooh, cute little cardinal. Well, that's not a bad price. I'll take that home. And that's it. Boom. Done. So, just keep that in mind, guys. You know, we're not doing every little feather. We're not doing all these crazy little details and all that because it's just this tiny little piece. Now, the one thing I did goof up is I don't like to do his beak black usually. I just kind of got carried away. Usually, we'll put a little bit of orange or a dark, dark yellow kind of color on there. Or you can even leave it kind of red. 
I like to have the beak stand out. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video though. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you guys want to share your cardinals with me, you can on Facebook. I got a chainsaw carving group there for those that follow me and are subscribed here on YouTube. It's called Kyle Hall Woodworker New Carvers. Be sure to answer all the questions. And once you do, I will accept you into the group where you guys can share your works, whether it's a cardinal or bears or whatever you guys want to do. I'll admit, I'm not as active in that group as my members are, but I do stop in and leave comments and uh, hopefully it encourages those of you to keep doing what you're doing. I really do appreciate all my members. You guys help support this channel directly, help keep it going, and you know what, it means a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, it's all fuzzy because it's still very wet. Hey right, guys, so here he is with the paint done. Like I said, do the beak a little orange or leave it red because then it'll stand out. People can see it a little bit better. But, you know, this is just a quick idea for you guys. Um, like I said, this this really isn't my favorite little bird that I've done. So I think we're going to do another tutorial using that dry piece. And we're going to do it again. Keep an eye out for that video. If you want to see it, be sure to hit subscribe. Give this one a thumbs up. Hit the bell. Hit all. Turn your notifications on so you guys don't miss it in the future. But for the most part, you know, you got this little bird. Somebody will buy it. I'll, uh, I'll end up repainting that beak a little bit and I'll clean him up just a little bit more, but he's going to have to go in the shop and dry out. I can feel the moisture and it's just, there's too much to try and really finish it. I can't even put clear coat on it when it dries because the wood is just, it's too wet. That's the truth. So you want to let these pieces dry out though, like that one is. It's super dry. So like I said, we're going to do um, another tutorial carving little birds out of scrap wood, guys, and it, we're going to do better. We're gonna do better, all right? But hopefully this will get you going for this weekend, give you another little idea with those scrap pieces. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, all right? Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Also, what do you guys wanna see me carve next? I have a running list with people's names and their recommendation for the next video carving. Um, I'm really gonna start tackling that list when I'm closer, you know, kind of like into the summer weather. And if you want to be on that list, get a mention in one of my videos and carve the piece that uh, you want to see, then, uh, you know, leave me a comment down below. Also, if there's something you need help with in carving, if there's a tip or a trick or an idea that you guys would like to see, let me know as well. Because honestly, the only other thing I can start doing after these guys is we're going to start carving bears again. And... I don't know if people are bored of bears or you guys love bears or do you guys just want to keep seeing bears or, you know, I don't know. Let me know. I, uh, I'm always like, man, I need a brand new fresh video. I don't want to bore everybody with bears, but bears sell, right? So I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm open to you guys is, is your guys' ideas and what you guys would like to see, but I'm just rambling. I got to go. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.